In today's episode, we have Corey Carter with us, and he is going to talk about how you can leverage a podcast to get leads for your business. You will also get to hear the benefits of breaking podcasts up into micro content, the exact steps it takes to create a show people will want to listen to, and how to choose which podcast is right for you. And now, on with the show. Welcome to the Online Course Igniter podcast, where you'll hear from successful course creators and how they were able to turn their passion into a thriving online business empire. What's up, everyone? Thanks for listening to the show today. I'm excited for you to be here, and I'm happy to have a special guest on the show with us today, Corey Carter from Hindsight Hacking Media, who is an expert in all things relating to podcasting. And as you all know, I love podcasting. It's one of my favorite forms of media. You can listen to it in your car while you're doing the dishes or while you're out for a run. And so I uh, listen to a lot of podcasts myself. And so I think this will be a really great episode to have him on and kind of talk about the world of podcasting and how it can help with driving uh, leads to your online course, how it can help grow your audience and build relationships with them. And uh, maybe we can even talk about the relationships we built through podcasting, which is probably one of the biggest benefits I have found doing a podcast is getting to meet all these wonderful people like Corey. So uh, how's it going today, sir? Doing fantastic. I uh, appreciate you having me on and I love podcasts uh, and, and what it can do for some folks. So uh, I'm excited to be able to talk about that today. Yeah, this will be great. And I think we can um, start off easy and talk about some of the beginner things to know about while doing podcasting. And then we can maybe move into some more advanced strategies for podcasts. But before we get into all that, why don't you just take a moment and let the audience know a little bit about yourself and what you were doing before you got into podcasting and online business. And then how did you transition into this world? Yeah, definitely. Uh, So Funny story, my business partner and co-host of our show, Hindsight Hacking, uh, Ron Cool, we actually met running a restaurants. We, uh, we, we both had pretty cool jobs and traveled around the country, uh, opening restaurants all over the place, uh, managing teams you know, from everywhere and uh, big and small and all the kinds of fun, great stuff. And while jobs were great uh, for me, the people and, and everything I did was awesome, except I was gone all the time. The tipping point was one month I was gone for 30 of 31 days. And it was just like my wife and uh, my son didn't see me. And that was like, I'm done. I got to find something closer, you know, and, and I just had to have a little leap of faith, right? This is why I like telling the story is because if you don't always know exactly what's going to be on the other side when you make a change, uh, especially one that you're happy with financially and just, you know, the fulfilling and all that, I ended up taking a leap, made it so I could just go home, took a 30% pay cut, you know, wasn't quite sure how my wife and I would pay all the bills. But then the moment I took that, that change, the moment I was home, all of a sudden she got this great promotion of which we didn't see a single dollar missing from our overall total finances. And it's just, you know, so I, I just love that good things can happen when you're doing things for the right reasons. You got to have that little faith. You got to take that leap and uh, good things will, will happen from that. But yeah, that led me to, to basically working with Ron. And we discovered that we had some extremely good uh, values that were driven and aligned together. And we both loved helping people. We both loved uh, developing people. Uh, we never really cared about the actual companies we worked with. We never cared about food. We just cared about the people within it. And, and that led us to starting uh, a company that was more in-person, doing masterminds, coaching, all the stuff in person uh, until 2019 when uh, we, we went down the road of podcasting, went down the road of the online business, and uh, the rest is history. Very cool. So yeah, you know, I think like you said, it's important to take that leap of faith. Sometimes it can be very difficult. Um, it can be hard on people, you know, you you don't know what's going to happen and it might turn out, you know, in a negative light if you're not prepared. Um, but it can also turn out to be very positive. I know that we took that leap of faith uh, about eight years ago now, and I haven't looked back since then. And it's been an amazing journey. And it's uh, not always easy. You know, there's going to be hard days and there's going to be trials and tribulations, but you just work through those things and you keep moving forward. And just over time, the success grows. And 
So uh, yeah, I, I definitely feel your story there. So when you decided that you were going to do these like in-person events and masterminds, like when you decided that you were going to just start running your own business, what was it that you were doing and what were you helping people out with? A lot of goal setting, business plan writing, um, you know, and just just really kind of helping people figure out. And this is more within their own corporate positions. If you know, if somebody was say, I don't know, just a entry level manager, we were helping people figure out and learn and get the tools necessary to do the you know kind of the multi uh, you know level multi unit or just whatever the the next step in their business and their career were. Um, and so, yeah, we were taking these, you know, mastermind, like kind of like networking groups and keeping it small. And, and each one we would, uh, you know, te- work through what their goals were, how they were going to achieve it and kind of write out those plans. Um, and, and then, you know, as we kept doing that, we, we went to the, the entrepreneur and started working with those like entry level businesses, right? Like the, and, but it was more brick and mortar. It was more financial advisor. Uh, insurance salesman and that kind of stuff. But yeah, but you know, we liked it small enough. We we kept it to where um, there's just everybody could get the right amount of you know coaching and and networking within that same you know hour a week type thing. Yeah, and then it was it was in 2019 when we're like you know there's this whole world that we can see on Zoom, <laughs> and uh, we can we can touch more people and. You know, and that was kind of when we started going online. We're like, we're going to do the same type type of like networking and coaching uh, and mastermind type thing. That was the plan when we started going online. But then, yeah, you can see we shifted completely. Okay, and what caused about that shift when you um, went from more of this corporate world, you know, business planning, goal setting, to more of the things that you do now? Part of it was as we went figured out how to launch our show. And we joined a coaching program to to do that, and and then as we were going through it, it, it was just like it was a thousand dollars for this coaching program. All it, what was sold to us was everything that we needed. We would that was in this thirty day program, right? And so we're like, all right, we got that. But then two weeks into it, there was this pitch for doing graphics and figuring out the cover art and doing that stuff, and and, that, and we just didn't feel strong. We didn't feel great about that. And then we saw people around us like fall off because they couldn't they didn't have the money to pay more or they couldn't actually figure out how to make it themselves and so then they ended up not launching and then another week later and the, there's another pitch for editing and it's like you know we're not the sharpest tools in the shed but we can figure this out right and so we started editing we're like oh this is easy this is fun uh, I love this and then all of a sudden one person asks because she was stuck and, and it's like yeah we'll do it and it was like 20 bucks an hour minimum wage basically Right. And, and just because we wanted her to get her message out there, we wanted her to get her show launched. And, you know, and then one person turned into two, and then both of them are rescinding referrals. And, uh, and the fact that we, we just loved what, what we were doing, we're like, gosh, we could, we could turn this into helping people get their message out and do this, you know, via the podcasting, you know, and we just did a couple other things. Ron's got a background in graphic design all the graphics and the videos and that kind of stuff is, is kind of his strength. And then I dove in head first into the editing and I was spending towards the end of 2019 and all of 2020, like anywhere from 40 to 60 hours a week, I'm just editing and, and, and practicing and, and trying to get better at all of that and learning more about it. And, but yeah, it was just a complete shift because we, uh, we really had a passion for it and we could still help people at the same time and, and help them get their message out. Okay, cool. Yeah, that sounds pretty awesome. You were seeing some uh, holes in this program that you could fulfill and uh, you started getting these clients and helping them and it just kind of seems like it blossomed from there. Um, so my qu- my question to you is why podcasting? What is it about podcasting that you chose over doing any other form of media like writing a blog or doing a YouTube channel or posting on social media? What is it about podcasting that draws you in? Um, yeah, well, it's funny. That's a funny story. Like when you, if you were to ask Ron and I keep bringing him up, but you ask him why podcasting, he's going to be like, cause Corey made me, uh, <laughs> he had no clue what a podcast was at that point. He's like, Oh, is it kind of like a radio show? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And yeah, he was all in. Uh, but for me, I, in 2012 was really the first podcast that I 
started listening to. So I was one of the early adopters, you know, I think it's what, 2007, 2010, between there is when the early podcasts were really getting going. Uh, but I found that I became an avid listener of a few shows at, in 2012. And as we ventured online and we, we saw that just the value of publishing, whatever that avenue is, whether it be the blog, whether it be a Facebook Live every day or uh, you know some kind of show like that, podcasting is what spoke to me that I was like, well, I've already been doing this. I see the value that people have given me. Like I want to uh, give that same value out there. And so that's kind of why the podcasting, the beauty of like Ron and I, we, our whole social media, our whole uh, YouTube, our whole, you know, anything that we're doing, it truly starts with the podcast. We, we do the video side and then we break it into micro content. Uh, we went probably all of 2021 posting three times a day and multiple different social channels that included micro content from all the podcast shows that we were doing clips and videos and uh, quote cards and all that fun stuff. And so, you know, it just allows us to do the fun part and then we can still be, you know, out there in the other places without having to struggle and find new content. Now, why not the blog? Cause I think blogs are equally as good. Like I want to take our podcast and actually turn it into a blog, but we haven't done that. Um, it's just kind of the one step that we haven't uh, tackled yet. I, I like the idea of repurposing the content, especially if you're doing a video podcast, because then you can utilize YouTube for the video, audio for the podcast. You can script it into a blog, as you said, and you can also turn those into social media posts, micro content, as you mentioned. Um, I find that turning Sometimes uh, a podcast into a blog is a little different because of the way you speak is a little different than the way you write. So you have to do a little editing there, but I feel like it's uh, super powerful. So anyone who's listening now, who's thinking about choosing a medium for publishing, uh, what would you say has been the major benefits of creating and hosting a podcast? Number one is the relationships. The amount of relationships you can acquire through this process is is truly insane. We've never once had a guest tell us no to be on our show. And, and I don't care if they're big names in the in the space that we're talking or, you know, somebody that's just, you know, just doing the same thing, right? Like it, nobody's ever said no. They always want to be able to share their message like I'm doing here today. You never know after that conversation or the conversations leading up to the show of of where it may lead, whether it be uh, business partnership, uh, another referral. Um, you know, it's just you, you just really don't know. And and the fact that a podcast at that show allows an easy re reason to be able to talk to anybody. You know, you can do a Facebook Live and you can do interviews in other fashions. So if you have some kind of show that you can do interviews, then that's an easy in to just be able to have a conversation with anybody. And and so that's why I'm all for have a podcast or have some kind of show where you talk to people, you know, it's just can open so many doors. Yeah, definitely. I love it. That's, that's been my favorite aspect of it. It helps build your authority and relationships with your audience. Um, but the doors that have been opened through the podcasting has just been monumental. Uh, I've met some great people, even people that some may consider competitors in the same niche of, you know, creating and marketing online courses have become good friends of mine through the podcast. People who I've joined their groups, they've joined my groups, we've done trainings for each other in each other's groups by meeting through the podcast. And so I think that that's, that's really cool. I, I really do enjoy that aspect of it a lot. So if someone wants to get into podcasting, how can a podcast, other than building relationships, you know, with the people that you speak to, how can that be beneficial to their business? In other words, how are you using your podcast to help grow your business? We mainly deal with entrepreneurs that have a podcast that's related to their business in some way, shape, or form. And today, we don't always want the big box, right? We don't always want to go to the biggest store uh, or you know, just buy from the biggest people that's just a, all about the numbers in a company, right? Like we want to be more in touch with things that we purchase and the people that we can buy from. And podcasting allows you to do that. So, uh, you know, YouTube's the same way, right? Like it allows you to get to know who you're buying from. And so anytime you have your podcast that's tied to a business, it's, you know, if you, if you sell coaching, 
then on your show, you've got to talk about coaching a little bit. And so people can get to know, like, and trust you. And, you know, the beauty is then people are coming to you, right? They know what you're about. They know how you feel. They're coming to you at that point if they've come in that way. And, and you don't really have to sell them on who you are. Then you can just, you know, talk to them about whatever the item is that you're selling down the road, right? Uh, but having a podcast 101, are like the monetization piece that we teach everybody is if you know exactly what you're selling, if you know exactly, you know, what that is that's relevant to your podcast, then find your ideal client and get them on your show and build the relationship first and foremost through the process of an interview. And then it's, you'll know, like, hey, I have the solution to the problem that I just heard you talk about on the podcast interview, right? It's a super easy, soft sell. That alone allowed Ron and I to leave our six-figure year jobs and go full-time in this podcasting world because we both replaced our incomes by doing podcasting through the interviews and the people that we directly met for the show and went from there. So you you can't match it anyway, in my opinion, uh, if you don't have some kind of show. Are you struggling to create your first online course? Do you have an idea for a course topic, but don't know how to get started? It can be hard trying to figure out everything that goes into course creation. How do you outline your course? How do you set up the technology to create the content? How do you publish it so that you can begin helping others and making money immediately? We know it can be difficult for first-time course creators. That is why we have designed the Start Your First Course Challenge. Our goal is to help you get that online course published within a couple of weeks. That means that you can get your digital product to market without wasting a bunch of time. We will show you how with the easiest methods possible that we have learned and crafted over the years. You'll learn how to choose a topic, outline your course, script what you want to say, and then record the material. After that, you'll discover how to set up the platform and publish it all with a simple system that's guaranteed to get you results fast. Beat your procrastination by taking action today. Go to startyourfirstcourse.com now to sign up. That's startyourfirstcourse.com. See you in the challenge. I want to get into talking about ways that you can monetize a podcast or ways that you can make money from the podcast or how to get leads to say an online course from the podcast. But before we do that, let's take it back to a beginner level just for anyone who hasn't started a podcast and is thinking about this. So if someone has a a business or they're in a niche and they want to get into podcasting, what would be the steps that you would take them through or the framework that you would show them to get them starting off on the right foot and overcoming any mistakes that you may have made in the beginning? First, I would I would say, hey, go to go to my my program, 30 day <laughs> you know, program. But you know, that's another conversation. No. Um, first steps, first steps, truly understand what your offer is, right? Um, you know, and that that's one thing with the online entrepreneur and 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 even through the last couple of years, there's the incredible increase in the number of people doing their own businesses, they get lost or they don't succeed because they don't necessarily fully understand what their offer is and who they're uh, offering it to, right? And so it's making sure you understand that part before you start your show. Uh, And then once you do, then you can start that journey and just record the journey. That's, That's one of the, you know, if you're horrible on episode one, awesome, but record the journey, you know, let people that even if they catch you on episode 100 and they're like, oh, this Jeremy guy is pretty awesome. I'm going to go back and listen starting on episode one. And then they hear the growth. They hear the progression. Know if, if you want to make money, if you want to have it tied to your business, know your offer, know who you're selling. And then just don't overcomplicate it after that. You can get an expensive mic. You can have all the tools and, and great things and spend a bunch of money. Or you can just do it cheap and use your phone and use good headphones or uh, a microphone that Apple gives you, right? Like it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, you've got to be able to hear it, right? Like you've, you can't be horrible audio or people would tune away, uh, but the content overall is more important. And, and so many people get stuck on, on, I think some of that stuff. And I'm just like, well, if you have a place to record, uh, just go record, make sure it's quiet, right? Like just don't overthink some of those, these things when you're getting started. Uh, and then again, it's, it becomes part of the growth when you discover you're like, oh, I really do like wearing headphones. It makes it 
makes the sound better, makes like the overall experience better, then yes, go get some good headphones down the road. Um, but after that, then, then it's just, you know, be consistent. I mean, I think that's, that's the number one, find a way to, to be consistent. And if it's recording in batches and, and getting, you know, three months worth of stuff, then great. If it's recording one hour a week, then awesome. It doesn't matter, but be consistent. Don't, don't go one week and then take up two weeks off and then go another week and uh, take another three weeks off, right? Like just consistency is key um, because the, it's, it is the long-term play to continue to grow the show and, uh, you know, build it from there. Yeah, I, I like all those points that you made here. Understand what your offer is and who you're helping. Uh, recording the journey along the way. Don't overcomplicate the process and being consistent. You know, um, when when I wanted to podcast originally, and this was some years ago, I, I wanted to do that. I wanted to make it as easy as possible to get started because I knew me being who I am, if I spend a whole lot of time researching all the software and microphones and equipment that I would need, I'd never get off the ground. And so I used the Anchor app and I created a podcast, the digital product show. I think you can still find it on iTunes, but it was literally just me and my phone uh, in the in the car. You know, like I would go work out at the gym and then I'd sit in my car for five or 10 minutes and just, you know, record something off the top of my head. And, uh, that show never took off. I kind of, you know, uh, quit doing it after a couple dozen episodes, but it really just helped me break that barrier of, of trying to overcomplicate things and, and realize that, you know, it doesn't have to be complicated. Even to this day, I just use a basic USB microphone. I mean, we're traveling, so I can't carry like a big mixing soundboard with me everywhere I go. But, you know, I've, I've tried to make it as simple as possible to just hook up the USB mic and hop on and, and have a call with some great guests like yourself. Um, and then I think the consistency is a big one because people will start to expect the consistency. And I think that's how you really gain followers because when when someone knows that your show is going to be published every week at the same time, you start anticipating that. Because I do this. I know from personal experience that there's three or four shows between podcasting and YouTubing. I look forward to each week and I'm kind of just waiting like, they're about to launch, you know, a new episode any moment now. Like I can't wait till it comes out. So I feel like that's um, super important to to have that consistency, and no matter what it is you do. Um, very cool. So you you have these ideas for this podcast. Uh, you you get started and you start rolling with it. Do you have a preference? And I know this is kind of a, a vague answer, and we'll kind of depend on the person and the type of show, but. Do you prefer interview style? Do you prefer just you talking or do you prefer a mix? Like how how do you decide if someone needed to decide like what kind of podcast they wanted to create? How do you go about making that decision? Yeah, definitely the mix. Definitely the mix. Unless you're Joe Rogan uh, or somebody with a big name, huge following, like you you need to have a mix of it. And here's why. One, anybody you're interviewing and relationships that you're building from that, right? Like that can blow up your, your business alone. Uh, but you also have access to their audiences every time, like when this show goes live and you tell me, then I'm going to share that this show is live, like, you know, so with my audience, right? So you get the audience growth factor, uh, with, with the fact of having in interviews. Um, but you've got to, you know, talk about the thing that you're passionate about, whatever your expertise is, uh, because that's where people will truly get to know, you know, what you're about and what you're offering and what all that stuff is, because you're going to be that expert, right? And, and the, some of the best hosts, uh, it's like, if you're on your show, you're truly edifying your guests, right? Like you're truly giving the guests a place to speak and talk about whatever they're, they're uh, teaching, you know? And so, you don't always get that that spotlight, so to speak, on yourself when it's a, a interview. So that's why, again, it's important just to kind of mix it because you can you'll build faster and better with using audiences from your interviews, plus the relationships you build with those guests. Uh, but then you'll truly give yourself that platform to uh, speak on and teach on, and and uh, your audience will get to know you from those solos that you do. Yeah, that's that's some good advice. I've thought about this with my own show because when I started, I wanted to have an interview style and uh, we 
are 70 plus episodes. When you're listening to this, it'll probably be closer to the 80 or 90 mark, but um, it's all interviews. And I thought about that myself. Like, I wonder if I should, you know, do some solo episodes just so to, to show people who are listening that I do have, you know, input and expertise in this subject matter. So uh, I appreciate that response. I think that's something to definitely think about. And, um, you know, it, it varies it up a little bit too. So it's not always just people listening to you. It's not always just people listening to interviews, but every now and then they get an interview and then they get a little bit of advice and then an interview. I think that variety could also keep some interest in your podcast too. Yeah. I mean, that's the fun part, but find a way to be consistent, whatever it is. Right. And so just like you appreciate the weekly episode from people you listen to, as we teach people when they're launching, like, okay, maybe at first do three interviews a month and one solo. Right. And that solo can, from a content, if you're stuck, like you can recap the three episodes or whatever you want to do and keep it easy. Right. For our show, like Ron and I, we have a weekly interview every Friday. Uh, but we, we've also gone through different segments of, of the solo aspect. Right. And when I say solo, it's the two of us. So we're still having a conversation. But we went through and probably six months of what we called the daily hack. And it was a 10 minute show. Uh, one kind of tip, one direction, one little thing that we talked about. Uh, and that was daily for a long time. And then we're, we're actually in the middle of switching it now. And we're moving to three segments uh, where it's it's the Friday interview. And then Wednesdays, we're going to do in what we call kind of that impact, that short episode. Um, but it's, you know, what's this one thing that we can go do to make an impact on our business today? Uh, and then our our third segment is we're adding what we call the no limits segment. And that's like nothing's off limits, whether it be politics, religion, whether it be, uh, you know, we, we spent one day talking about Joe Rogan, but we're kind of mixing that. And that purposely is to allow us to, to truly get known what is everything that we believe in. Right. And, and people love us or hate us. And, um, you know, Ron and I are very different on our beliefs. Like he's definitely political one way and I'm the other and super religious and, and I'm, you know, faith, believe in faith. Right. And like, we've got these very differing things and it's like, we can show people that you can actually talk about this stuff and be friends and work together. And it's okay. Like you don't all have to believe the same thing to get along with people. And, but we haven't released that stuff yet. The other two segments, because we wanted to build up the bank and then make sure that when we launch it, it can be as consistent as our Friday interviews. Yeah, I, I feel like we, there's more need of that uh, in the world right now that we can all just get along. <laughs> like, even if you don't agree with someone, uh, yep. it doesn't mean you have to, you have to, you know hate them or be against them. So that's awesome. I like that. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it goes back to the consistency, like you said. So do you batch record? Do you like the idea of batch recording episodes so that you can have a consistent schedule going forward? Yeah. Um, with our interviews, we have basically two hours a week that we're available and we'll just record one interview a week. Uh, and so we're usually about a month ahead, uh, but so we don't batch record those. Our impact we would we definitely you know record a month at a time spend 2 hours and you know have at least 4 episodes sometimes more sometimes less um and we do that kind of once a month and then our no limits show we're doing them live in our facebook group and then turning it into a podcast afterwards with zero editing and so that's again that's the, the risky show um and so that's um not really batch recorded either so it's kind of a mix Okay, cool. But again, it's back to consistency. Just make sure that whatever you choose, you are doing the same thing over and over again. So you're building that routine, that schedule, correct? Yep. Cool. Awesome. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about the strategy of how the podcast can help the business. So I want to get into, you know, talking about how can we use a podcast to generate leads for a business? You know, this this audience is going to be listening and are trying to create an online course or they have an online course or they have a business and they most likely want to either get leads from the podcast. So they they need some type of system set up that is driving people from the podcast into their uh, funnel or into their online course, or they would like to monetize the podcast in some way. So can you take a moment and describe some methods that you believe in 
for monetizing the podcast or for generating leads? The simplest aspect for, in our opinion, for monetizing is, is the guests, right? Like again, know your offer, know your, what you're uh, selling. And then you search people that would be your ideal client to potentially be on your show. So we learn through our reach outs and, and the research that we'll do. And we're like, okay, is this person an online uh, entrepreneur? And do they have a show? If they have a show, we can talk about that. And they could potentially come into us uh, for editing. Or maybe they are a business and we discover that they don't have a show, but we can learn that they should have one based on that, that scene, right? And so we start that relationship. A couple of conversations. We always have a pre-call uh, just to make sure because we've had a couple of interviews that we didn't love. So we always have a pre-call uh, before the interview. And then we have the interview and then we create a bunch of micro content, right? And so through this process, we've created up to like 10 touch points of this person. Now, that's a pretty good relationship, right? Of That you can build across 10 touch points. And then you know, like, can I, do I have a, a solution to their problem? So that's why we look at the guests as potential leads, every single one. And I'll probably have, I don't know, 10 calls a week with potential guests and then interview one person a week. But all 10 of them are potential leads for the business. Okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You know, I hadn't really thought of it that way before. So from your business perspective, you are reaching out to find entrepreneurs to come onto your show. And so you have a guest come on. Maybe that guest is, like I said, really good with Instagram. And so you have them come on the show. They can talk about Instagram and business strategies around Instagram. But through the process of building that relationship, you can find out from them if they have a podcast. And if they don't have a podcast, then your program might be something that would be beneficial to them. Did I say that correctly? Yep, 100%. And this, Jeremy, is a perfect example. Your show, you're, you talk about you know coaching and, and course creating. And you know if, if you know I have a, a podcast coaching program, right? then I potentially could be a client. right? So I'm a, a lead at this point for you. And then we build this relationship together. And, and you're like, okay, now, now I know what Corey truly has. I know what his course is. I know that I could probably help this or, or not. And then you move on if you don't. Right. And, and so, yeah, like that's exactly um, for us, like the podcast monetization 101 is find your ideal client and then figure out a way if they can be on your show or not. Because the sales part is so easy afterwards because you build that relationship and then you're not, there's no hard sell. It's just, hey, we have this relationship and I can help you. Or you just, you know, have the relationship. Maybe there's no business can be done, but it's still, there's never a hard like sales conversation. Yeah, that's awesome. I like that. Using my business as, as an example, I have people come on the show all the time who I, I hear their course creation process and getting their course up. But some of these people who come on the show have struggled to do like the marketing and to grow and scale their business. And so if I had a program that helped that uh, aspect of you know marketing, sales, and, and scaling your business, then I could reach out to them after the podcast and say, hey, you know, is, is there something I could help you with? So I like that idea. That's really cool. I hadn't thought necessarily of having the guest be a type of lead or prospect for the business, but that makes total sense. I mean, you're going to have a much stronger relationship with that person, as you said, versus a uh, cold audience. So that's that's really cool. I like that. What about like ads and sponsorships? Do you ever do anything like that with your podcast or do you recommend that for anyone who uh, has a podcast? Well, we, we don't teach it in our launch program to do it. We definitely have clients that have them. Um, we, but if, if anybody's ever asking like, hey, should I go get a sponsor? Like, yeah, you can. Um, but it's not it's anything that we do on our own show. But if you can do a, a commercial or a sponsorship, like sponsor your own show <laughs> yeah. and have the link to your offer on your own show. Um, because what better place to uh, showcase it is, is on is there. So it, it's nice if you're starting out, it's, I definitely wouldn't mess with it. Um, I, I wouldn't have that as a goal. I would have that as a, Hey, I'm doing pretty well. And somebody approached me, uh, you know, or, Maybe there's something that you believe in and you're an affiliate for. Absolutely. How we roll affiliate stuff out is we get the guest on our show and then we have a conversation and then we start promoting their stuff afterwards, right? There's just so many cool things that you can do. But if you have a specific ad and, and again, some clients, like they know they have to release 
three episodes a month specifically to promote their commercials that in there uh that they uh, somebody's paying them for and it's like gosh i wouldn't wouldn't want that uh limited aspect of my uh, podcast right like i'm going to release three three or four or however many episodes because i want to not because somebody paid me uh and so i have to I, I totally agree. I mean, when I started this podcast, I didn't have any product. And so I knew that at some point I would want to promote something. And so I created a ad segment in the middle of the show. Um, in the beginning, it was just for, to send people to my Facebook group, you know, because I just wanted to have that. I wanted people to get used to that spot being there so that when I did start promoting products, it wouldn't be such a problem. But I agree with you that I rather just promote my own things, you know promote my own online courses and coaching programs. So now those ad segments in the middle are just sending people back into my own funnel. Like you said, I've had people come on the podcast like uh, Kim Dang from Group Convert, and then I would promote her product. Or I had, you know, uh, Panasiosos from Learn Worlds come on and, and promote his platform. Uh, yeah, this has been really great. So uh, just thinking about anyone out there who's kind of getting started or uh, they don't have a podcast yet. I know you went over some of your, your tips earlier in the show and steps to get started, but what would be the biggest takeaway that you would want someone to know um, who's thinking about starting their own podcast or, or needs help growing a podcast? If you're just starting out, there's three things that may stand in the way of people just moving forward. Number one is the tech stuff, a graphic, an editing or whatever. Uh, there are so many people out there that can help you. You can move forward. You can, you can find somebody to help on the tech side, uh, whether it be a, a low end Fiverr type thing or you, you know, hire a company to, to do it on each of the steps, right? Or the next piece is, they uh, are worried about time. I don't have time to run a podcast. I don't have time to batch record. I don't have time to, to do this on top of all my other stuff, right? Like we'll figure out how you can mix it in, right? And that's why we went to all of our social media starts and finishes with our podcast because we didn't have time to be on Facebook all the time and Instagram all the time and LinkedIn all the time and our podcast, right? Like that was the pure reason why we're like, well, let's just do the thing we truly love and record it and then you know get the rest of it from there. Don't ever use time as an excuse. Uh, and then uh, the the last piece, uh, it, it's just anybody that hasn't started their own show. There's that little voice in your head that's probably saying, "Well, why would anybody listen? Why should I do this?" You know, a little bit of self doubt. Tell anybody out there, like, just remember, it, there's somebody that needs it. Uh, if somebody buys something from you for some reason, like they they need it, right? They need your message. They need to hear it. Because of this podcast, you never know who is listening and when. And you know, they might just hear the show a couple times and end up in your Facebook group, hear your offer uh, a couple times, and then finally hear another podcast episode and then purchase it. Right? Like you just don't quite know, but it allows the uh, audience to get to know you. So people will listen and just have fun with the show. Don't overcomplicate it. Um, and again, whether you have five listeners, five downloads a week, like or a uh, um, hundred thousand, like it doesn't matter. It's just the one person that's at the right time is going to hear it, uh, but they can't hear it if you don't get that message out. Perfect. Great, great advice, Corey. Thank you so much for this. Uh, we really appreciate you coming on the show today. And if anyone is interested in learning more about how you can help them out with your podcast, where can they go to do that? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Corey E. Carter. I'm there on Facebook. You can find me. Uh, or if you want to check out the program to help you launch, it is profitswithpodcast.com. Profits with an S at the end with uh, podcasts at the S and the end.com. Okay, very cool. We'll make sure that we link everything up in the show notes for you so that people can check that out very easily. And uh, man, this has been awesome. Thank you so much. You've given some great advice today. There's been a, a couple little nuggets of information that I can use for my own podcast. So I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, man, I just hope that uh, everything goes well for you in the future and you just continue with the success that you've had and just keep growing your business. Jeremy, uh, I appreciate you letting me share the today and uh, have me on. And I look forward to, to our relationship uh, that, that will continue to grow from here. Thank you so much for joining us today, Corey. You can find out more about him and his business by visiting profitswithpodcast.com.
or you can get the show notes of this episode along with links and resources by visiting onlinecourseigniter.com forward slash 80. See you all next week for another great episode. Thank you for tuning in to the Online Course Igniter podcast. Make sure you subscribe wherever you're listening so that you don't miss an episode. If you would like to learn more marketing strategies and how to sell your online course, then also check out our free community where we share tips, tricks, and tutorials at onlinecourseigniter.com forward slash community.